Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, patch 9.2 is out. I joined Quickie Baby's livestream last night, this was the very first game we played. It took me a while to join Quickie Baby's livestream. I downloaded and installed over my old installation of World of Tanks 9.1 and the game just wouldn't start. So I had to do a complete fresh install and it took about 40 minutes. If you, like a lot of people, are having problems with patch 9.2, I recommend that, that is what you do. A fresh install of the game, and then worry about setting your mods up again afterwards. That's, which is what I'm doing here. I'm running completely vanilla World of Tanks. No mods, no XVN, no damage received, announcer, nothing. I've even forgotten to turn uh, colorblind mode on. <laughs> uh, but this was the tank we were getting excited about. The FV4202 was at an 8% DPM increase with that 105mm gun. This thing now has ridiculous damage per minute output. I always kind of liked this tank, but the, the one thing that held me back with it was the, the low rate of fire of the 105mm gun. It was one of those tanks, unlike other mediums, where you can blow somebody's tracks off and work your way around him. You can't. You could never really do that with the FE4202 because it just did not fire fast enough. Oh, speaking of having my tracks blown off. Oh, Type 61. Oh, he's missed me. Bit of support fire there from Quickie Baby's FE4202 on the other side. Between us, finished off the T54. But there's another one, and that Type 61 is hungry for a bit of jingles. Quickie Baby's pushing him. Pop out. No, he's backed right off. Oh, no, this is bad. T-57 Heavy has scented blood in the water. I get a shot into him. He penetrates me once, twice, and blows my tracks off. Three times. Misses his fourth shot. Quickie Baby's helping out. Fire on the move. Miss. I would normally never even consider firing on the move with this tank. But with 8% faster DPM. And some lovely, lovely juicy targets. One into the Death Star. I can't quite reload fast enough. He's turning his gun. Turret cheek. Lovely. Penetrated. Second T 54 is making a push on me. I've got to back off. I do not have a lot of health here. This guy has almost all of his health. The 215B and the Type 61 are pushing and they've killed Quickie Baby. He finished off the Death Star, but looks like the Type 61 got him. And I, I do angle far too much there. Trying to side scrape around that rock, but I give him far too much of my side. Plant one into him in return, though. And again. He misses his second shot. And I actually managed to beat his reload. And I'm worrying about the Type 61 coming around behind me. And the T-54 finishes me off. But you'd never be able to beat the reload of a T-54 in an F4202 before patch 9.2. It just makes it so much more of a flexible tank. I mean, it was never a bad tank in the first place. But the, the slow reload on the 105mm gun kind of limited what you could get away with. Uh, unlike other medium tanks that have a faster reload, where, for example, you're trying to circle around another tank, your first shot goes into his tracks, pins him in place, and you could keep him tracked, for example, using the Centurion with a 20-pounder gun. You could keep the tank permanently tracked and, and just humiliate tank destroyers. You could not really do that in the 4202 because of the slow reload. Well, that isn't really the case anymore. I'm really, really liking this tank now. I mean, I kind of liked it before, but I was never able to do very well in it. And it was all down to that slow reload and the relatively low top speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Whereas in other tier 10 medium tanks, you could rush forward to an ambush position pump a couple of shots out, uh, retreat. Y you couldn't really do that in the 4202. It didn't really have the speed to, to get to the juicy ambush positions ahead of anybody else. And when it got there, if you found yourself in a one-on-one -on -one fight, 
with another tier 10 medium, you were probably going to lose. You know, all of the things being equal, they, they just had better DPM than you. And if it didn't have better DPM, and I'm basically talking about the E50M here, well, it has armor. So the Vol 202 uh, tended to come off second best whenever it was facing other tier 10 mediums. Well, that just isn't the case anymore. It, it now has higher DPM than the Leopard 1. <laughs> But don't cry, Leopard drivers, you still have the speed and manoeuvrability, and your gun's still good. It's just that the 4202's gun's now better. <laughs> Hooray! Um, there's a bit of a plot twist ending to this match, by the way. I mean, Ike and this IS-7 have spent an absolute fortune on each other and just done no damage. But at some point... Ike's going to strap his man pants on. Now he's killed the other IS-7 at the back of the road. Him and this M103 are going to go for it. I think he got really, really sick of just spending money on this guy. But watch this, you're about to see the intuition perk in action. Fires once. Reloads, 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 fires again, bounces, switches to high explosive, intuition kicks in, instant reload. <laughs> but that's not the plot twist. We've got a mouse in the cap circle. Um, and he's, a, he's done well in a mouse to make it all the way around there. Now, the Waffentrager E100 we thought was heading back to reset the cap and going to be crossing this dry riverbed but the two tanks in the cap circle one of which is a mouse has just capped and then boom plot twist <laughs> right after the cap reached 100 percent artillery killed him anyway <laughs> now you may very well be sitting there thinking bloody hell jingles i don't know what you're getting so excited about the fv4202 for that was a crap game well actually it wasn't now, admittedly, I did give that T-54 at the end far too much of my side to shoot at. If I'd angled less, I would have been able to eat the shot with my tracks, kill him, and potentially beat the Type 61 as well. But I didn't, so I died. But despite that, myself and Quickie Baby were top on damage done. <laughs> and if you sort it by XP earned, I was top. And it's all down to the rate of fire increase. So I'd started to experience something I'd never felt before when driving a tier 10 tank. I'm actually having fun. And just to prove it wasn't a fluke, we went to do it again. A quickie baby there in chat, he's just spotted two of the guys on the enemy team. One of the T-54s and the Lorraine are in the platoon. They're from the Finnish clan, RSOP. So uh, <laughs> he's uh, shouting their battle cry, Uli Uli Uli, and they're responding in kind. Like, good guys and very very good players so we need to keep an eye open for them we're here on Westfield again obviously a tier 10 game we're in tier 10 tanks Quickie Baby had played a whole bunch of uh, FV4202 games prior to me joining the stream because obviously as I mentioned at the beginning I had to re-download and do a complete reinstall of World and Tanks in order to be able to play so I joined the stream late this time he's in his object 140 he's going Russian it's been confirmed, by the way, that the FV4202 is being replaced by the Action 10 Centurion. So, another Centurion model going to replace this tank. This thing is going to become a Tier 8 Premium Medium tank. The armor is going to be reduced, and it's going to have a 20-pounder gun, rather than this 105mm Royal Ordnance. The FV215B with a 120mm gun is also being replaced by the Mark II Chieftain. Oh, yes. Now, they haven't said what is going to happen um, to the Fall 202 and the 215B, if you have them in your garage. IS-3 down there. This was foolish. I popped down to take a shot at the IS-3. Missed him. What's this, though? I bounce two shots. Quickie Baby comes to cover me. He bounces the third shot for me. I shouldn't have exposed myself to take shots of that IS-3. We knew that they were going to have tanks like the STB-1, potentially the T-54s, on that opposite ridge. You can see our T-71 moving towards, and those were the guys we were shooting at. But the Lorraine's up above us, which means that the other T-54 probably is as well, and there we go. Don't really have shots at them, though. Oh, wait, no. We've got the awful Panzer. There we go. <laughs> 
myself and Quickie Baby both hit him at the same time. And of course this time we didn't get spotted because we've still got all this concealment in front of us. We, we, we weren't spotting these guys, it was the T-71. So we've taken advantage of him spotting for us. And some, some nice spotting damage there for the T-71 driver, doing what, you know, a scout should be doing. Couldn't quite get the second shot off. I mean, I hit, but it was the turret, and you know what Russian turrets are like. And it was extreme range. But what goes around comes around. Wait until you see what happens later on in this replay. The 4202, not an incredibly well armoured tank. The turret front is good. Um, it's very well sloped and it's quite thick. Unfortunately, it's got this huge, it's like having a neck brace of a turret ring. And you'll see later on where I get penetrated from the front and it's all shot right through the turret ring. Right now though, the Lorraine's dead. I, I didn't realise, I was still worrying about it and Quickie Baby pointed it out. No, the Lorraine's dead, we don't have to worry about it him backing up this T-54, it's the other guy from the RSOP clan, so we're going to go and chase this guy down. Now, watch this. Now I'm in the open here, all these shots are coming from the ridge opposite. Look at the bouncers, okay, that one didn't bounce, eventually some of them are going to get through. But at that kind of range, and another one, and another one, <laughs> and another one, <laughs> and oh, bat chat. Okay, I've now got covered between the STB-1 and his friends, including the Waffentrager E-100, by the way, who <laughs> were all bouncing off me. Um, but now we've got to chase this batch out down. And I was attempting to circle him and get that building between me and him, but he drove through it. And it doesn't matter, he's dead anyway. Quickie baby, stopped to finish the T-54 off, came around to help me, but didn't need it. Um, all those shots were from Tier 10s, firing at me from well over 500 metres. Now, I'm not for a second going to sit here and try to tell you with a straight face that the FV4202 is a well-armoured tank, because it isn't, but at that kind of range, that 196 millimetre, sloped and angled, mantletless turret front, was bouncing shots from STB1s, Waffentrager E100s, and God knows what else. They just gave me a steel wall. In an FV4202. I mean, seriously. There are not many people playing World of Tanks who can say they've gotten a steel wall in this thing. I had a really fun time playing this tank. And it hasn't changed that much. It's just a rate of fire increase. But I think it gave me the confidence to just try to push the tank a little more than I normally do. Normally that low reload on the 105mm gun makes me play this thing, well, more like you play a Tiger in a Tier 9 match. Be cautious, stay back, play it as a sniper. Don't try to push your luck. But the buff to the DPM, it's like I've finally found a Tier 10 tank that I enjoy playing and feel competitive in. And of course they're removing it from the game. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> That's always the way it goes, isn't it? You finally found something in World of Tanks that you like and they either nerf it or they remove it. <laughs> ah well. I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. And they are replacing it with another Centurion, so it can't be that bad. Hey, there we go. Another win. And, as promised, <laughs> E100s, T110E5s driving around. <laughs> And it's the medium tank that gets the steel wall medal. <laughs> and Confederate. Here, look at this. I didn't do as well on damage done in that game, but yeah, did nearly 3,000. It's fine. It's nothing special, but, it, it, you know, it's, it's all right. But look at that. 12 hits received. Damage blocked by armor. <laughs> Over 3,000. <000. laughs> in the 4202. Let's have a look at one of the E100s, shall we? <laughs> Here he is, and I'm not judging the guy, you know, it's completely situational. I don't know what circumstances he was in, but damage blocked by armour? 750. <laughs> <laughs> FV4202, strong tank. <laughs> of course, the 4202 is not the only tank that has received some substantial buffs in patch 9.2. This is another one, the M46 pattern. I think this is a fantastic tank. The American Tier 9 medium, well, one of the American Tier 9 mediums, 
The other one, of course, being the T54E1, but that's an autoloader. The good old M46 was a great tank, but the accuracy of the 105mm gun was appalling. It was 0 0.42. Well, it's still appalling, but it's slightly better. It's now 0 0.4, but hey, a buff's a buff. But it's not just the raw accuracy of the gun. They've also messed around with the suspension of the tank, and if you've got the top suspension equipped, then the tank becomes a much, much more stable firing platform. The gun is now more accurate. The aiming circle disperses less when you move the hull, when you move the turret, when you fire the gun. All kinds of factors have been reworked to make this tank so much better at firing and firing on the move. I've always loved this tank. This used to be my favourite tank in World of Tanks, until Wargaming gave me the Century in 7-1. T-57 heavy spotted. With 0.4 accuracy, you just aim for centre of mass at targets at that sort of range. Forget aiming for weak spots. Hit him, blew his tracks off, but unfortunately, then he disappeared. Quickie Baby and Ike here, pumping shots into his last known position. Might hit him, might not. But I'm starting to get a little bit nervous about the fact that we've got three tier 9 mediums all clustered together in the same spot. And that's a really big artillery on the enemy team. Now, admittedly, he's probably pre-aiming down at the corner of Fail, down on the bottom corner of Arctic, but I, I, I'm not taking the chance. Instead, I push forward. Now, there's an IS-7 on that corner, doing battle with our IS-8. And I am not going to waste time shooting at the front of the turret of an IS-7 with this 105mm gun. With 218mm of penetration, which isn't bad by tier 9 medium tank standards, you, you, you don't shoot at the front of the turret of IS-7s. Instead, you work your way around the flank and you shoot them in a big fat Russian ass. Oh, look at the map by the way. Now, I hadn't noticed this. Uh, Quickie Baby had. He starts pinging the map. Look at the AMX 1390. Spotted the opening and he's going right for our artillery. Oh, this by the way is another one of those shots that you just don't take. Actually hit him. <laughs> And that was never going to penetrate. Meanwhile, the 1390, he be all swiggity swooty, I'm gonna get me some arty booty. And any second now, the quickie baby's still pinging the map. Nah, too late. T92's dead. Of course, he's one of those artillery players who thinks that the entire team exists just to feed him targets. Newsflash, it's not all about you, princess. But while he's nerd raging and the Object 704 is no longer a threat, we're going to do some flanking, pattern style. I said, we're going to do some flanking, Pat. that's better, go on, don't be shy. Alright, so there's a Conqueror up there, with, oh, there's a T-57 Heavy around somewhere, but it's that fat Russian booty that I'm interested in. Gonna oil up for some surprise butt sex, best kind of butt sex. There he is. And going for the engine. Oh, no engine fire. Oh. Oh well. Maybe the T57 Heavy is feeling frisky and wants to join me for a bit of horizontal action. And Magic 8 Ball says yes. <laughs> Look at him burn. And he uses a fire extinguisher to put the fire out while he's tracked. <laughs> Surprise butt sex. Always the best kind of butt sex. Now the Conqueror goes, oh, oh, Jingles, you stay away from my butthole. And he starts backing off, but he manages to land a shot into the light tank before he does. We've got support coming around. Quickie Baby and uh, the IS-8 pushing around from the other side. We're going to chase this guy down. The scores are pretty even, but we definitely have the better tactical positioning. We've basically cornered them all into one quarter of the map, but we've got to keep the pressure up on them. Quickie Baby plants another one into the Conqueror. I come around, going for the engine shot, no fire this time, he fires and misses. I don't know what the reload's like on that Conqueror's gun, but I'm pretty sure I can beat it. Unfortunately, I totally waste the shot. And this is where the Yag Tiger appears. Now this Yag Tiger, he knew his stuff. At first I didn't think he was going to be much of a threat there. I thought either I was going to get shots at his flank, or he was just going to give his lower glacis to the guys behind me. I figure I might take one hit, and I do, um, and luckily it damages my engine, but one hit is all he's going to get, because now I've got the rocks on my right covering me from him, 
and I can work over this Conqueror. Oh, we spotted their artillery as well. That's good stuff. Use my first aid kit and my repair kit. Making sure the Yag Tiger can't hit me. Pop out. Finish off the Conqueror. Now, this Yag Tiger. Just watch this. Now, upper casement of a Yag Tiger from the front. Never going to penetrate. He ends the AMX. He is in a fantastic position. We've got no artillery to get him out of there. The, the enemy 1390 sort of that. Quickie Baby just got uh, obliterated by the Death Star in his Type 61. And this guy is just not giving me anything to shoot at. And it's not just his use of the terrain to keep his weak spots covered up. It's the fact that he had the foresight to see what was happening and relocate fast enough to get over here and hold up this entire flank. Even firing high explosive at him, I, I, can't, I can't even splash through all of that frontal armour. And there's not enough open ground here on the side because he's using the terrain wisely for me to have shots at the side of his upper hull. So, oh, and he's just killed Ike. Well, he still doesn't have shots at me. And we've got a T-62A diverting his attention now. At the moment, I do not have an effective shot at this E-100. But then he turns his turret to the side. <laughs> so, you know, that works. T-62A has now managed to get around the Yank Tiger, and this has given me the opening that I need. Now that he's no longer facing his gun this way, I can now get around and work my way behind him. And it's all over at this stage. There's only the two of them left. And the Yag Tiger's caught between a rock and a hard place. No matter what he does, he's going to have to turn his back on somebody. And I suppose he figures that uh, turning your back on the pattern isn't as bad as turning your back on the T-62A. Then he has a sort of change of heart. And I totally screw this shot up. I'm going for his tracks and miss. But he's never going to be able to point that gun at me again and in comes the T-62A blows his tracks off, I get another shot right through the side of his superstructure T-62A stops and finishes him off so that was nice and, and that pretty much sums up my experience at patch 9.2 so far uh, there are some vehicles that have been nerfed uh, we're looking at mostly some of the big nasty tier 10 tank destroyers like the Waffenträger E100 and the FV215B183 but I don't have those tanks so it hasn't affected me. Tanks that have been buffed, like the M46 pattern and the FE4202, are fantastic to play. Of particular interest to me, personally, is the buffs to the Indian Panzer and the Leopard Prototype. The Indian Panzer now aims faster and loads faster, and the Leopard Prototype aims faster and loads faster with both the 90mm and the 105mm gun, and I'm very, very close to unlocking the Leopard Prototype, so patch 9.2 gets a big fat thumbs up from me. Hope you enjoyed the replays. As always, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.